we're going to talk about the future of Kent's theatres this morning. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, we heard about redundancies at the Theatre Royal in Margate, and we will hear more from them about the latest and their bid to raise funds, probably in around 15 minutes. But first, to the other end of the county, Jason Lower joins us from Trinity Theatre in Tunbridge Wells. Jason runs the Youth Theatre and Education Programme there. It's really lovely to have you on the show. Jason, how are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, You must have been so happy to have the youngsters able to come back because youth theatre has just resumed at Trinity, hasn't it? Yeah, so we started um, on Sunday and we had 11 groups last night, four on Sunday, got one tonight and two more tomorrow. Um, And it's just been really lovely to have them all back in the building, seeing their faces again. And I mean, some of them we've seen on Zoom, so it's, it's nice to see them out of those boxes. Um, and in the flesh. It's really nice. What is, what's the value to young people of being in a youth theatre? What did you see on their faces and in their body language when they came back to you in the last couple of days? Ah, so just seeing their, their confidence develop over the last few years, the, the, the time that they're with us, and seeing the friendships that they form, seeing their, their drama skills improve, seeing their skills in other areas of the theatre improve, um, and seeing them have a real sense of community with with uh, the others around them, mm. and that's something that's really important to to like everything that we do. Um, being able to offer that that sense of community, that sense of belonging, and I know it was important when I was a member of the youth theatre as a teenager, and it, it's really important to to all of the young people who come along to Trinity every week. Did you were you a member of a youth theatre here in Kent, or did you grow up somewhere else, Jason? Uh, I was a member of the Oast Youth Theatre in Tunbridge. Oh, I know. Yeah, lovely little theatre. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you you know the value that this, this brings to youngsters. Do you think a lot of them will want to go on to careers in theatre? And does it matter if they don't? Um, I mean, I hope a lot of them do. Uh, uh, we have had quite a few this year going off to drama school uh, or to um, study stage management um, and other parts of the theatre, but it's... It, it, really doesn't matter if if that is not their end goal it, it's all the other soft skills um that come from from being in a youth theater i used to um work in political research and i know i wouldn't have been able to do a lot of that job um and the presentation side of it if i had not spent my teenage years doing plays that's a really interesting parallel yeah okay that's got that's given me food for thought when i talk to politicians in future how do you keep it all COVID secure? I mean, you, you obviously have been doing things on Zoom rather than in person during the height of the pandemic. What what do you put in place? Because these kids are back at school, so they have contact in another sort of bubble in their school environment in the town. How, how do you keep it fun but also safe? Um, so everything is socially distanced. Um, and we also ask uh, questions when they come in. Uh, we uh, make sure that in communal areas they are wearing masks. Uh, we have an extensive cleaning operation in between each session mm. and at the end of the day. Um, we also have uh, reduced the size of our groups. Uh, so there's now a maximum of 15 and they are all, uh, where possible, bubbled with their school bubbles. So okay. uh, they're, they're with uh, their friends from school, which minimises the risk um, mm. of the... Uh, a, a possible transmission. And yeah, OK. So they're in a bubble with people that they bubbled with yeah. in another part of their lives. That makes complete sense. Um, let's just, just for a minute talk about the wider picture. What are your concerns? Um, um, it may be specifically for your lovely theatre, Trinity, or it may be for the wider world of theatre. What do you see around you? What, what, what worries you? What do we need to be thinking? Uh, I worry about the... Um, us being able to come back fully and us potentially losing out on a lot of talent because they have had to go and find other jobs because Mm. uh, their roles are not being financially supported. Even though those are viable jobs when the industry can recover fully, it takes a lot of, uh, like, show will need a large capacity in order to break break even. Mm. Um, And uh, it would be a terrible shame if a lot of, incredibly talented professionals leave the profession, whether that is uh, because they work at a theatre or because they're a freelancer, Mm. because they have not been able to have the financial support that they so desperately need. 
Did, I presume Trinity has got ways of, of, of functioning. I'm, I mean, I'm making a hugely unusual comparison here because I was watching a Globe Theatre um, live transmission with my daughter, who I know you've worked with in the past. Um, we were watching Romeo Brilliant. and Juliet on um, the uh, Globe Theatre's YouTube stream last night, and they were asking for donations. And the Globe haven't done anything. They had to pull their productions this year. They're not going to do anything until next season. Um, and I wonder about their future. I, and yet I get my, my, my stream, because I live in the town and I've always loved Trinity, is always full of the things that are going on. Do you feel that Trinity has got some sort of mechanism to fund itself? Does it feel secure to you? Uh, some of it depends on the outcome of the Art Council um, uh, funding application that's going through at the moment. Oh, okay. um, but we uh, we do have, um, we've been running a program outside and we're starting to run a program inside mm. with a greatly reduced audience, okay. um, which is obviously able to keep us going a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. The youth theatre coming back is, is a promising sign as well. Mm. Um, and uh, we're also doing a lot of fundraising such as uh, we've launched Sponsor a Step, um, and uh, my lovely friend Hugo, who's a, who's a dog, um, has sponsored a step as well. Um, and uh, they all stepped in positive directions, but yeah. um, it won't be until we can have a full capacity audience yeah. that we're able to really ensure that we are guaranteed a future. It won't feel like um, the George family Christmas without a trip to Trinity for the Christmas show this year, I have to admit. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm not a big panto goer, but we've always come to your Christmas shows. It's one of my favourite places in the whole of Kent. I would do whatever I could to help it. And it's so lovely to hear about the work you're doing again, Jason. Thank you so much for joining us today.